In the previous video, you looked at time warping and applying speed changes to segments in the sequence. Now let's have a brief run through of color correction, color matching, and selective color correction. Let's select the segment in the sequence and apply the color correct timeline effects. Like all the other timeline effects, you can do quick adjustments with the basic parameters in the toolbar. If you enter the editor, you will be presented with a plethora of controls. Firstly, you have two color correction tools to choose from. The first tool is the standard color corrector. Here you can adjust masters, shadows, midtones, and highlights. There is also a color wheel for tinting, numerical adjustments, a histogram, and curves. These tools should all be familiar to you if you've worked in software of a similar nature. The current interface is what is referred to as the Overlay UI. This interface allows you to see your image full screen, and if you adjust a particular value, the other controls are temporarily masked. The other interface you can switch to is the standard interface using this toggle button. The second color correction tool is the color warper. As a standard timeline effects, the color warper and color corrector cannot be mixed together. You have to choose either one or the other. So if you're working on a specific shot, working this way should be quite effective. But when you exit the color correction tools, you have to take into account that you are working in a sequence and might have to match one shot off another. Let's take a look at the next shot. This gladiator is looking quite blue because this could have been shot on a different day with a different light and another camera. Regardless of this, you need to balance the colors with the other segments in the sequence. To see other points in the timeline at the same time, Swipe to the right of the screen and choose the triptych player. You will now get three positioners in the sequence with three views. You have the option to force the positioners to look at the previous, current, and next shots, but you can set the positioners to free, which means you can also scroll to any shot in the sequence. Now that you have a good point of reference, you can select the bluish shot and add a color correction to it. Going into the editor, you are still able to see the triptych player, which will make it easier to color correct your shot while matching colors from the previous image. Let's switch to the color warper. To balance this shot, you could color correct it manually using the color wheels or also called tracking balls. Or you could use automated color correction. To match one shot to another, click the SELECT button. A message will prompt you to select an area to be modified. With this cursor, click and drag a box over the gladiator's top. When you release the cursor, a blue LED appears on the SELECT button, telling you that it has made a selection. Press the SELECT button again, and the message prompts you to select an area to match to. On the reference shot, drag the cursor over the gladiator's top. As soon as you release the cursor, the color warper does a match. It's pretty much balanced, and you can still tweak the shot further if you choose. I'll exit the editor, and switch back to the standard source sequence viewers. The final workflow example is selective color correction. I'll go to the last shot in the sequence where we see some legs running towards the camera. Let's say for instance that you have been asked to change the color pads on the trousers. Select the segment and add a color correction effects to the shot. Going into the editor, I'll switch to the color warper. The color warper has up to three selectives, also known as secondaries, to isolate color. The first thing to do is switch the color warper's mode to work on selective one. The image goes monochrome, and this is for one specific view only for selectives. This is called the selective view, and it is for picking the color. 
enable Selective 1 and press Pick Custom. With the picker, you can click and drag on the padding to select the color. To fine tune the key, you can switch the view from Selective View to Matte View. The black area is the region affected by the color correction, the gray is the softness, and the white area remains unaffected. In essence, a chroma key was created by the diamond keyer. This is the color selection tool located on the right of the interface. Notice the two diamond shapes in the color cube. The inner diamond is the tolerance, and the outer diamond is the softness. Whatever color values fall within the diamonds are affected, and whatever is outside the diamond shapes remains unaffected. You can interactively adjust the settings in the diamond keyer by moving the points on the smaller diamond shapes. You can also adjust your selection by manipulating the grayscale sliders to isolate the colors you wish to remove. To assist with fine tuning the mat, you can click the plot button and sample a point on your image. The black dot appears in the diamond keyer, and you can tweak the shape around that point. Blurring the mat helps to create a subtle color bleed that is common when dealing with color correction. You can set a specific value, and by enabling the G button, you can toggle between box and Gaussian blurring. Now to color correct the pads, you need to change to the result view. So even though you are still working on Selective 1, you are seeing the grade in context of the overall grading of this shot. As an example, you can adjust the hue slider to change the color of the pads. If you want to keep the grading of the overall image on top of the selectives, just switch back to working on the master. Press Exit and you will be able to scrub the result of the correction. Press Render to create the final result before playing it back. In the next video, you will encounter your first exposure to 3D compositing through the Axis Timeline effects.